Well, it seems I've started a little bit of a trend here on the channel, slicing corals that are near and dear to my heart. Today, we are going to frag the weeping willow leather coral. I'm ready. Emotionally, I'm, I'm ready. I'm so ready, I'm, I'm not ready. What is up, coral people? My name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. If you wanna see me use sharp objects to slice and dice things that are close to my heart, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you are notified whenever I upload new content. I wanna thank you so much for your support of this channel by subscribing. That really is the best way to support the channel. Of course, you can always comment. I've gotten a lot of great direct messages from people. You can also follow me on Instagram, Bahama Llama Coral, and uh, follow this whole journey because today ah, we are fragging my weeping willow leather coral. I can't really call it a weeping willow because technically, if you watch the video that I did above, it's not technically, but it is. Regardless, it means a lot to me, and so slicing and dicing it today, well, uh, I'm a little indifferent about it. There are two good things that are gonna come out of this, and that's one, fragging a toadstool isn't rocket science. It's pretty well documented on how to do it. Number two, a lot of the local reefers here in the St. Louis community know that I have this coral and have seen this coral and have inquired about this coral, so I'm excited to share it with the reefing community here in St. Louis. So for this video, I'm gonna take you through the entire process of what it takes to frag a toadstool. Like I said, it's pretty easy. Just a small disclaimer. I'm not saying that the way that I do it is the correct way to do it. It's just the way that works for me. I've consulted with some experts. Pablo over at Marine Farmers said pretty much the same thing that I saw on every YouTube video and all that that I watched. Pretty much just cut a donut, a one inch donut around the crown of the toadstool and then frag those up into little sections. I think I'm just going to use the rubber band method because there's the toothpick method that you can stick a little toothpick through and then tie the rubber bands around that. There's super glue, which is hit or miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of people say they slime up, so it doesn't really work. So I'm just going to go ahead and pretty much just hold it down with a little rubber band and then in a couple weeks, it will go ahead and grab onto the plug and then I'll be able to disperse them amongst the reefing community here in St. Louis. All right, so I've been thinking about how I'm going to do this because it is a monster of a coral and it's on one of the two rocks that is in my display tank in the frag tank. So it's gonna take a little bit of finesse, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove about four gallons from the display tank, fill up a bucket, replace that four gallons with some fresh salt water. So it's kind of like a mini water change. And then uh, we'll bring it over here because the best way to do this is outside of the tank. As you may or may not know, toadstools defend their territory with toxins. So they'll release that toxin when they are irritated and I don't really want that in the tank. As much as I can mitigate, of course, I'm gonna run carbon for a couple days and make sure that it's all out of the waters because I've got acros and I know that there's some controversy on whether or not the toxins affect acros more than other corals, but that's for another video. So let's go ahead and get this monster out. We'll get it on the table and we'll go ahead and frag this up. Okay, so as you can see, I've, I've upset it a little bit. I made sure that the polyps were retracted and inside. And you also see down there at the base right here, I had to cut it because it had grown onto the other rock. Now it'll be interesting to see what happens here if that grows a new toadstool right there or if that was just a calloused area I had to cut through that and we're gonna go ahead and remove the rock now. The clownfish are a little upset because, well, this is their home. So they have hosted the weeping willow and uh, they're gonna be a little upset for a second, but it'll come back. And this thing is so big, I don't even know if we're gonna notice that we cut it. So let's go ahead and get this out and start cutting. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. Uh, this is a brand new razor. It's cheap. I got it from the dollar store. Um, I literally like unpacked it for this. I've seen some people use Lugol's or iodine and some people don't, but I'm going to go ahead and do this because we're cutting tissue. Just want to make sure that there's no um, bacteria infection that happens here. Again, these, this is a toadstool. It's not rocket science on how we're going to go ahead and frag this, but let's go ahead and get it out of the bucket and we'll go ahead and put it on the table here. 
I just hope there's no like peppermint shrimp on this. Guys, <laughs> I, I I need to support this too, and it's it's uh, the crinkle the crinkling of it doesn't help the situation at all. Let's see how easy this is. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and. Limey. Sticking with right around the crown here. All right. Do we'll do one more cut. Man, I feel so terrible. I feel so bad. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get this back in the water now. So, go ahead and rinse it in that tank water. And then we'll go ahead and get it back into the tank. But let's go ahead and cut these guys up into the, into the, into the actual frags. Smaller, three. I know I'm stressing some people out with this razor technique here. We'll have some bigger pieces, some smaller pieces. The, uh, it's definitely sliming up here for sure. It's a highly requested frag. A lot of people, once they knew that, you know, I had them or I had this, this toadstool, even the guy at the local fish store, Steve, <laughs> is like, hey man, when you get to frag that thing, it's getting a little big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think that's good. 13 frags off of this. Uh, let this sit for a second in the iodine and then uh, put the other one back. We'll go ahead and let this sit in the iodine for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes or so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mount these on the frag plugs with rubber bands. In the meantime, let's get this guy back in the tank and hit that carbon. Sorry, I don't have this angle. I apologize. Your home has returned. Oh, these poor clownfish. <laughs> They're like, what did you do? Where did our home go? I'm hoping it will still spread out here in the next couple days and you won't even notice. You won't even see that edge. So, sorry guys. Let's go ahead and mount these up on these plugs right quick. All right, so it seems to help if I put the rubber band on first. And I'm so surprised because these polyps are still, they're still coming out, even though they just got sliced. All right, so I just, I discovered the trick. So if you're gonna do this, and I, I'm not gonna redo the ones that I already did, but if you have these smaller rubber bands like this, you just wrap it around the stem. You can get it to where it's like just enough. See how it's like, it's still taut, but it's not gonna suffocate it. And then you can just kinda tuck it down. All you want is just a little part of it to mount to the frag plug. Now, the only reason why I'm so adamant about putting this on frag plug and not putting it in a rubble rock is simply because this, these are going to people. So I wanna make sure that they're not just flying all around or you know, you get two of them on the same uh, piece of rubble rock or whatever, but this seems to work best. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue doing this about five or six times on the stem. And then you just kind of pull it over the disc and then you don't have a rubber band underneath it. We're gonna go ahead and get these into the tank. I would much rather frag a scully any day than to frag this. This is a, this is a lot of work. Scully is just like literally just one cut. This is so many cuts. All right, let's put them back in the tank. All right, due to lack of space in the frag tank, I went ahead and just kind of rested them 
on a small frag rack that I made on this rock. So we'll see what happens here in the next couple days. We'll keep our eyes on it and uh, hopefully they're all healthy, viable frags. Needless to say, I think there's gonna be some happy reefers in the St. Louis area. Currently, I'm not shipping anything, so uh, sorry if you really wanted a piece of this. Uh, it's just really gonna be dispersed amongst friends and local reefers here in the St. Louis area. And I'll, I'll be totally transparent. I'm gonna sell these frags, but as I've said many, many times before, all the money that I make from any of the frags in there just goes right back into the channel and right back into the tanks back here. So it just, it helps sustain the, uh, the hobby for me. And that's one of the coolest parts about this hobby. I mean, all of our tanks are only so big. I mean, there's a few of us, maybe you, that has a 2,000, 3,000 gallon tank that has just so much room. But eventually, your stuff, if you're doing the right things, will grow to be too big and you'll have to frag it eventually. This thing will probably just go in the trash can. I mean, if you ever want a just disposable razor, with a handle on it. I know a lot of people like to use the actual blades, but you know, I like to have something with a handle on it so I can get a little bit of extension on it. These are like a buck at the dollar store along with your uh, super glue gel and all that that you could buy as well. This is two days after the fragging session and the reef is just waking up right now. So not everything is out, but over the past couple days, I've noticed that the frags of the weeping willow are actually out and flourishing and uh, hopefully most of them are starting to grab hold of those plugs. And the mother, well, she's still a little upset. But what's interesting is if you look closely, and sorry about the glass, it is gross. I need to clean this. You can see some of those polyps starting to come out of the cutting edge. So right where we cut off the frags, you can see those polyps coming out which is a good sign. That means it's it's adapting, it's growing, it's healing. So while it hasn't been in full force yet, we haven't seen full polyp extension on this. It just went through some trauma. So I'm assuming that uh, it's healing up and it's doing well and we'll see that full polyp extension in the next couple days. I will make sure to post that on Instagram. So make sure you follow me there. All of my anxiety about uh, trimming back the weeping willow toadstool are gone. Just don't ask me to do it again very soon because uh, it's, it's probably not gonna happen. What's your favorite coral to make frags of? Go ahead and comment below. Is it zoanthids? Is it acropora? Is it toadstools or leathers? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you wanna support this channel and watch me slice up some things in the future, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you are notified whenever I upload new content. At this point, most people have clicked away from the video, but you, haven't. So congratulations. If this wasn't a virtual relationship that you and I had, I would shake your hand. I really appreciate it. I truly do. If you're here now and you've watched until this point, thank you so much because you're one of the diehards and I really, really appreciate that. And honestly, everybody up to this point, almost 2000 subscribers, I'm gonna look back on this hopefully someday and be like, oh, when I fragged the weeping willow toadstool, I had 2000 subscribers and now I have 4,500. It's crazy. I don't know why I'm like 80 years old when that happens, but I hope the growth isn't that bad. <laughs> But we are growers here. We're definitely growers. This is the point in the video when I tell you about Ocean State Aquatics. Whoopsie. If you have not checked out osachoice.com, you should go do that because you're gonna find a multitude of corals and livestock that you can purchase online and it will be delivered right to your house. And like I've said before, Scott Crow, Chris Kaz, all the guys at OSA have upped their game with the opening of a frag farm across the street from Ocean State Aquatics. So they've got a lot more selection when it comes to that and a lot more is coming. So just go to the website, osachoice.com and make sure to order your corals today. And let me know how it goes. Let me know how your experience goes. I would love to hear some feedback on how your OSA experience is. Oh, <laughs> there they are again. There are those, those pesky videos that you can go watch now. It's gonna be weird when YouTube changes that and the videos aren't there anymore. And uh, future me is just talking to nothing. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You know what? I'm gonna go.